you ever gotten on stage and just forgotten what you're going to say? It can be terrifying. And although it only lasts a very short time, it can seem like forever. And I know this because I once saw it. Somebody, it happened to somebody. She was a blonde, good looking, blonde, bright girl. She got up in front of the people there, about ten people in the audience, I was one of them. And she started talking. And it was fine, she was talking about herself, certainly knew what she was talking about. No problem, it was just a casual talk, she was kind of introducing herself to the audience. It went on until all of a sudden she just stopped. She took one of those too long pauses. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. That pause where you say, are they supposed to stop there? I think there's supposed to be something else after that. And right then she educated the audience of the third F. Now you probably have heard about fight or flight. And those are the ones that get the most press out there. But there is a third F. Freeze. And she demonstrated it beautifully. She just froze. And you can see that it's getting difficult for her to breathe. She pretty much wasn't breathing. And she just stared out at the audience for a very long time. And I remember thinking, what are you going to do? What's going to happen next? Just Wait it out, I thought. Just just wait it out. It'll be okay. Just just wait it out. But I could see that panic in her eyes. That deer in the headlights look. Now, if you don't happen to be in the country, you may not know where that idea of deer in the headlights came from. Well, it came from the fact that deer freeze. Some animals do fight, some animals do flight, deers do freeze. So when you're in a dark country road and your headlights are the only lights for miles around and the deer is running across the road and they see those headlights and they know they're in incredible danger, they just freeze. Which is why cars just plow into them and there are all those deer accidents you read about in papers if you happen to be in the country. So she's frozen. The pause is going on too long. And then she just, she just runs. Runs right off the stage. Right in the middle of her speech. Just runs off. And what do you do if you're in the audience after something like that? Well, everybody just kind of politely applauded. What else can you do? It's so awkward. What do you say? How do you handle that? And I remember when I saw it, I thought, I never want to have to happen to me. I never want to go up there and be so scared, so terrified, that I just go running off the stage. So I started taking a look around and said, is there a way to prevent this from happening? And actually, there are many ways to prevent it from happening. Today, you're going to find out about three. Three simple things you can do. Prepare to get ready. It'll take some take a little preparation. But make sure when you get in that situation, you're facing your audience, you're talking, you're chatting, you're having this nice back and forth conversation, you don't suddenly say, Hey, what happens next? What do I do? And you don't work yourself up to the point that you're just so freaked out that you just want to run right off the stage. You don't want that happening. You've got things to say, you've got points, you've got ideas, you've got thoughts. To get them out there, you're going to have to be able to deal with if you have a little bit of a brain freeze. Because it'll happen. It happens to everybody. You get up on stage and all of a sudden it's like, okay, I just forgot my next word. What do I do now? What do you do? It's all right. I said there are three things you can do. Very simple. Very powerful. So you don't want that to happen. You don't want to get up on stage in a situation where all of a sudden you're just don't know what to do, don't know what to say, it's just not good. So 
How do you deal with that? Well, there is something simple you can do. Very simple, very powerful, very useful. And it's something you probably don't think about. In fact, it's something that happened to that poor lady up there on stage. The poor girl on stage. She just known this one thing. It might have saved her. It might have saved her and made the whole thing unnecessary. Just one simple thing. Because there's something you do on stage and you get really nervous, really scared. And it creates a lot of problems. And just remember this. You'll be much better off. Just breathe. Breathe. I know, you're thinking, Tip, come on, it couldn't be that easy, could it? You went up on stage, hey, I'm up on stage, I've forgotten everything I'm going to say. What do you mean just breathe? What is that? Well, if you try it, you'll find it's amazingly effective. You do get stuck, you're not sure what the next part is, just simply take a breath. Just go. And often you'll find that something comes back in your mind. Right back in your head. Because it's already there. It's still in your head. You have been practicing, right? You have been working on it. So it's still up there in your head. You just have to get it out of your head. That's all there is to it. Not a big deal. Get it out of your head. Simplest way to do that. Breathe. Breathe. Once you start breathing, you're sending oxygen to your brain. What happens if you do get in this situation of freeze, or even fight or flight, your oxygen, your brain, your thinking shuts down. I mean, you really, you can't think. It's like all of a sudden, you're just, you're an idiot. You're up there, you're an idiot, you can't think of anything. Because no oxygen is getting up here. Just breathe. All of a sudden, oxygen gets back. And your brain says, hey, there's oxygen here again. Wow, I can breathe. Now I can start thinking. And you got a happy brain. And your brain starts doing all sorts of wonderful things. Oh, you wanted to think about this, or maybe about this, or maybe about this. Your brain starts doing what it does normally, which is giving you all sorts of ideas, all sorts of thoughts. And one of those thoughts is probably about the speech that you're giving right now in front of your audience, because that's the most important thing. Your brain knows it. it's like, oh, the speech, yeah, right. The one you practice, the one you worked on, okay, I got it right here. Don't worry about it. No panic. Just, okay. A little bit of breath. I'm good. Boom. Gets it out there. And that's it. So if that woman, if that girl had been up there, and if she'd just taken a breath, maybe she would have remembered it. Maybe she would have remembered it. And then you wouldn't need to run off in embarrassment. Fortunately, that was just a mild situation. It wasn't a major thing in front of a business or anything. Just a kind of bunch of people listening to her. It wasn't a big deal. But in a business presentation, business situation, you definitely don't want that to happen. Just take a breath. Maybe you're thinking, Tim, look, I'm breathing anyway, right? I'm up there. I'm freaking hyperventilating up there, right? Well... Yeah, but that's not breathing. That's <laughs> shallow breathing. Now dogs, hey, it cools them down. Great, when they pant like that. Humans, not so much. Not only is it not effective in cooling you down to go <laughs> Also, it means no breath to get into your brain. No breath to the brain, that's a bad thing. So if you get in a situation, Getting what you're gonna say, and you're thinking, oh man, what comes next, what comes next, what comes next? You start having one of those free brain freezes. You're like, ah, it's alright. Take a breath. Probably the next thing is gonna just come to you. Now if that doesn't work, there is something else you can do, but it takes a little bit of preparation. You tried it, took the breath, and it usually works. 
Usually it's okay, it's great, I take the breath, it's fine, it's working out, but not this time. Not this time. For some reason your brain's saying, well, okay, I got a little bit of breath, but I'm going to need a little bit more jogging here to be able to, to get this. Okay, it's all right, it's fine. There's something else you can do. Provided you make sure you take that deep breath. It's got to be a deep breath, a full breath. But that's not it. Doesn't do it. You're up there thinking, okay, I took the breath. Not happening here. My brain's not here. What am I going to do now? It's all right if you've made a small preparation beforehand. That just means use notes. Use notes. Notes. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Tim, wait a minute. They tell us all the time. Don't use notes. Don't use notes out there. You got to prepare. You got to memorize. That's true. Ideally, that's what you do. But if you don't have years and years to prepare for some reason, whatever it is, it's fine. You can just use your notes. It's okay. Now, when you have notes, make sure your notes are out of the way. Especially if you're doing this some sort of formal presentation. Make sure your notes are somewhere out of the way, or at least somewhere that will allow you to at least stand up, move around, gesture if you need to. So notes are all right, but make sure you still have a little bit of room to move around. If you've got your notes right here in front of your face, and you're thinking, hey, I can't see the audience, this is great. No. Or if you're just like, this the whole time, reading down like that, that's not good either. Notes are all right. Ideally, if you put them down on the table or tape them up somewhere, if you're doing a formal presentation. If you're just doing a business presentation, they can be sitting around the table, just kind of glance down at them a little bit. Now, the thing about notes is, make sure they're notes. Because it's tempting. You start thinking, oh, gee. I could write down my whole speech here. Every single freaking word, all these words, and write them all down, and there they are. Believe me, if you're going to glance down and see where you are in a speech, and you see all these words, you see a novel sitting there before you, that's going to really freak you out. So don't do that. Just notes. Just very simple notes that really cover, okay, this is it, just the, really the basics. Okay, I want to talk about that story. Okay, just put story, big story, or I want to talk about the hospital. Second. Okay, hospital story, put that in there. And the whole point of the hospital story is to deal with rooms. So, hospital story, room shortage issue. That's all you need. Because you know the hospital story, right? You know about the room shortage issue. You know the point you want to make. Your notes are simply there to remind you of what you're going to say. I mean, you aren't putting in, they aren't suddenly discovering, oh, I've got to do a speech and writing everything down. That's not going to work. You prepared, you worked at it, etc. You just need a little bit of jogging to your mind. And when you get that, boom, say, oh, yeah, that's right, the hospital story. You've told it, you know it, you're familiar with it, it's all you need. Don't write everything down. Just a few top hints. Just a few big points. These are the feature things I want to write about. These are the three things I want to talk about. That's it. Okay. Write that down. That's how I'm going to open. I'm going to close. All right. Fine. But that's about it. So you just glance down and say, oh, hospital story. Yeah, of course. And then glance up and you're good to go. Said, oh, yeah, right, the betting issue. Okay, betting issue. Yeah, all right, fine, talk about that. And that's the power of notes. Because it's just about giving your mind a jog. This is when you breathe in, breathe out. You're giving your brain a shot of oxygen. So when you take a look down, you're giving your brain a shot of, oh, it's the point. That's the points I want to make. Your brain just a little reminder of those points. Now you try breathing and you try the notes and those aren't quite work, there is a third thing you can do under special situations. Okay, you tried it. You tried the breathing thing. 
Really gave it a shot. Really breathe in. Breathe out. And a couple times. That's not quite working. You took a look at the notes. They're good. They're definitely good. But you need a little bit more jogging. Or you're in a situation where you have the notes, but you can't quite see them all the time. They're not really convenient. So you want some other sort of unobtrusive thing that can really kind of get you on your way and, and help you out. Now this will take some setup. This will take some work. But it's very common in business day and speeches today to use this. And all you need to do is make sure you have some sort of graphics. Graphics. By that I mean PowerPoint or the Mac version of PowerPoint or whatever presentation software you like use that. Now when you use it, don't get carried away. Just as with your notes, your point isn't to write down everything you're going to say up there. Don't put all the words, all the sites. In fact, don't even put, try to put as few words as possible or if you have a graph or something like that, you have to use it. But try to make it so that just looking at the PowerPoint, the audience looking at the PowerPoint, isn't going to tell them anything. However, it's going to cue you. So graphics. Graphics means also pictures. You probably heard the expression of pictures is a thousand words. Well, that's really useful when you're trying to remember what you're going to say. You see a picture, you hear a thousand words in your head, that's going to get you going. That's going to say, oh, yeah, okay, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, sure. And that picture will make it happen. Maybe you have a picture of that hospital bed. Say, oh yes, the hospital story and, and, the, and, the, and the roaming issue. Yeah, okay, I remember that. Great, all right. And it'll just pop back in your head. You're thinking, okay, you can do this. This can happen. And you tell a story back and forth, some sort of conversation back and forth, and then it all results in these rooms, and there it is. That picture can just cue everything. Now, as always, you got to make sure you've been doing some practicing beforehand. You worked on it, you thought about it, you really kind of went through it before you get up there and start presenting. Just going up there and presenting when you haven't really worked through it, haven't really done it, it's not going to get you an in-depth presentation. It's okay for some things. It's okay for some sort of a casual thing. We've got a very few points to make. But if you really want to go in-depth, you really want to go deeper, then really you've got to that deep preparation. And then when you get up there, hey, then it's all good. If you have the graphics, because the graphics are going to key you. The graphics are going to clue you in. It'll be your key, your clue, your, your point. I said that magic thing happens. You look at a picture. It's like, oh, wow, a picture. In fact, you can do this now. Take a picture and just write down all the things you see in the picture, all the things the picture reminds you of. Amazing how much is packed into that picture. And you can use that if you have some sort of presentation software up there. See the picture, boom, you got it, and everything comes together. Because of that picture, all of a sudden you start thinking, okay, yeah, I get it. It's about the hospital beds, it's about the seating. That's great. And then the next picture comes up. Oh, yes, yeah, that other story. Or you can have a blank slide. All right, this is the place where I talk more about that. Or you can have some sort of a chart. Well, this is the, yeah, this is that thing that tells about the very minimal text on your graphics. Because after all, you're going to explain to your audience what it is. Your audience should be able to look at the thing and figure everything out. There are some things you can't describe. At least a picture will say a thousand words, you can describe it as. But you want to make sure that you don't give everything up there. Again, don't put all your text, everything on that slide. It's only there for graphics, it's only there for that picture. And that's another way to remember. Blanking out on stage is a big concern, big terror for 
speakers. But it doesn't need to be. You keep in mind these three simple tips you can use. One simple one is to take a breath. Let's breathe in. Breathe out. Quite often you find the idea comes right back to you. If it doesn't work the first time, just breathe in again. Take a full breath. It's easier to take one of these panning breaths, remember that. Full breath in, out, and you'll unfreeze. Because just as fight or flight, there's also freeze. That's what many people do when they're in a hostile situation or a scary situation or one of those challenging situations. Your mind goes into primitive mode and you freeze. It's not good. If you just breathe, that can unfreeze you. Unfreeze you and then you're smooth after that. Or use notes. Use notes. Get some notes out there, notes about your speech, and you just glance down. Okay, I got it. I'm right back in your speech. So I was to it. Now when you use notes, you use notes. Abbreviations, very to the point things about your speech. Like here's a point, here's a point, do the story, make this point, do this story, make this point. That's what you want. Not writing a novel, it's impossible. Impossible, at least very difficult to look down and say, see all that text and say, oh yeah, that, that's the text I want, that's the text I want. Unless you're doing a reading of some book, don't write out every word. Just use notes. And you'll find a simple, easy way to get that point across. And then third, you can also try graphics. Graphics. You got a PowerPoint presentation or you got some other type of software that presentation software use it but use graphics pictures especially pictures say a thousand words take advantage of that put a picture up it'll cue all sorts of things into your head you know oh, yeah that's the story that's the story that that'll cue you it'll also indicate you don't have to tell a lot of things your audience will get a lot of information from it too so that'll be great in addition to graphics you can also have graphs or charts but if it graphs or charts, make it just the information that you need, that your audience needs. But you don't need to describe it or go over it in depth. Just, just the notes, just kind of the notes about the graphics, etc. So you've got it there so they can get it, oh, okay, I got that picture now. Then you turn, then the audience will turn to the presenter, you, for the answer. Like, okay, all right, got the chart. Now what does it mean? That's your job, presenter. Tell them what it means. So you're just thinking, all right, okay, and now what does it mean? And you say, this is what it means, this is why it matters, this is why it's important to you. Graphics can be incredibly useful that way. Because they get so much information across. They do it in a natural, simple way. Pictures just open up the mind. And they get people interested and they draw people in. That's what you want, you're already to draw it in. So in addition to helping you, graphics can help your audience get interested in what you're talking about. Stay interested in what you're talking about. So those are the three things. You can breathe, use notes, graphics. Now of course there are many other things you can do and you can research and study what other things there are. But the bottom line is when you get up there and you suddenly discover that you don't have everything perfect. You don't have everything down. You have every word yet exactly right. Don't panic. It's all right. It happens. It's not a big deal. You just get up there and ideas come to you. Thoughts come in. That's the way your brain works. If you relax, if you open up, your brain opens up, and all of a sudden these ideas, these thoughts come into your head. But you got to open up. you got to breathe. you got to get those points down. You have a few graphics to remind you. But it doesn't need to be a difficult situation. Because it happens. If it hasn't happened to you yet, it may happen at any time. It doesn't need to be a big deal. You get up on stage, some fight, some flight, but many freeze. If you ever get in a situation where you freeze, don't worry about it. Just use these three simple solutions, get yourself unfrozen, and get that presentation out, 
to your audience.